Welcome, welcome, welcome to the podcast here on Pollute Your Soul. We're here with Dreddy Fanks, and we have It's the Catch is here. Um, we're both going to be interviewing Dreddy Franks here, and I will ask Cash about what he's uh, getting into because I am a fan of him as well. And he's, um, this is his what? Um, probably the fourth time I've had him on the show. Probably yeah. like some obscure number. Um, but thank you, Dreddy Franks, for joining us. Um, what's been going on? What music have you been recently working on? I hear there's a collaboration project with Dom still in the way. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Me and Dom still, we got some shit coming soon. Um, we're working on the album. We haven't really worked out the titles just yet, but, you know, the concept is pretty much you know, we're going to be rapping together, but I'm going to executively produce it. So all the production will be handled by me. So you could expect like some real, some real baller ass, you know, down South West Coast, like G Funk, you know what I'm saying? Player music, you know, some feel good music. You know, that's the type of shit we like to make. We like to make some shit people could, you know, coast to and feel good to, you know what I'm saying? That's what, I, that's what we working on. You know, I got some solo shit coming soon, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say that for later. I'm gonna let y'all direct it. I don't. I, I could talk. I get long winded, bro. I, y'all mind? Don't mind me. Y'all let me know if I get too long winded, bro. <laughs> yeah, that shit is as freely as you want. <laughs> for sure, man. I appreciate y'all having me on. Though I just wanted to say that. Of course, of course. Yeah. I like that you. Um, it is kind of like um. Sometimes it gets tiring, like hearing all the hard. Like I like hearing your shit because it just makes me feel like it makes me smile. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like when I'm listening to you and stuff, it, it's fun. It's a fun time, and um, but like a lot of people are trying to be too hardcore. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that, bro. Man, all I could say is for me, bro, the the direction I wanted to go with my music. I think Ninth Wonder he had a quote one time. I think I saw him say it on Twitter. Like somebody asked him about like how he makes the sound or why he makes the sound. He said, "I make the music that I want to hear." And so for me, like I grew up listening to like like DJ Screw, Screwed Up Click, and you know a lot of the West Coast shit because I'm heavily influenced by like the '90s West Coast. But I heard it all from a Screw tape. Like even like I watch. I mean, I read interviews. DJ Screw said like some of his, his favorite shit to chop and screw was West Coast shit. So a lot of the music that I listened to. I heard it on the screw tape first and then I backtracked and did my research. So like that's how I ended up bumping shit like like Warren G and the twins, um South, South Central Cartel, Ant Banks, Selly Cell, Spice One, shit like that. But like I was just really into the the beat, man. Like it's the backdrop of the instruments. Like I feel like the instruments are so important to like the sound that I love to make. Like, it sounds so vibrant. That's what I loved about the G-Funk. It was beyond, you know, rapping about some gangster shit. Because if you really listen to my lyrics, I don't rap about no gangster shit. I rap about, like, some, you know what I'm saying, laid back, chill, player shit. Because I'm not a gangster. I, I consider myself a player or a Mac. So yeah. the, 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 the backdrop of the beats, man, is just like, you know... Like DJ Quick, like his beats is so like funky. It, it make me want to move, and I always felt like this the shit I want to rap on, man. I started rapping before I started producing, and like what really made me want to make a beat is like I didn't know anybody who had a beat like that. Like I was like one of the only people at my high school who really took music serious. I've been rapping since I was like sixteen. I probably made my first beat when I was like seventeen or eighteen, and like. You could like quote me, like ask some of my partners I went to school with. They'll tell you I was one of the only people at my high school that like really took music serious. There were plenty of people that like freestyled at lunch or some shit, but nobody really like had a mic and had like their own little setup where they was recording some shit. I really like, I'm like tech savvy. I'm I'm kind of sort of a nerd. I ain't even gonna lie. Like I really like really got on the computer and figured out how to pirate some shit, pirate, uh, you know what I'm saying, jailbroken FL studio, taught myself how to produce <laughs> a beat. And that's really how I did Like, I ain't gonna lie. I'm big pirate gang. I'm big motherfucking Luffy, One Piece pirate gang. Like, if hey. I can get that motherfucker, I'm for real, if I can get that motherfucker for free, bro, like, yeah, I'm getting that bitch. I'm sorry. I apologize, but, you know, they put it up there for free, nigga. Don't blame me. Blame the motherfucker put it up there. But, you, you know, that's my... That's my description on how I did the sound, bro. You know, you you covered literally two of my questions in that too, which was like, how'd you get started in all this? And 
And what was what was what was first? What came first, the chicken or the egg? Were you a rapper first, or were you a producer first? I was gonna ask that. Yeah, I was like, okay. It's always okay. Like, I could go into yeah. more detail. I'll go in more detail. Um, my first favorite rapper was Lil Wayne because huh. when I heard Lil Wayne, I just I liked the way it sounded like he was having so much fun when he rapped, like how you do that little laugh in between his bars and shit, like. Oh God, like when you really listen to Wayne and I was a mixtape rapper first, like I did, I mirrored him, like whatever beats he rapped on, I rapped on. Like to me, he made it cool to rap on another rapper's beat. And that's how, that's how I got my first start, like as a rapper. And right. what really, what really transitioned me to rapping, making my own beats was, you know, I come from the, I call it the backpack era, the mixtape era, like, you know, from Wayne going into like cool kids and uh you know people like Wiz and Currency like going from Wayne him rapping on everybody beats like on Drought is over you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. sorry for the wait mm -hmm. and all that when I heard I, I could say like cool kids tackle box or cool kids going fishing or uh Currency and Wiz how fly or Dom Kennedy from the West Side with love from Wayne transitioning to them. Their mixtapes had original production on there. And then you got to think, this is before the streaming area. It was just like that pill and live yeah. mixtapes. So when I heard these mixtapes and they got original beats on there, I'm like, oh, shit, these niggas not rapping on, like, you know what I'm saying, commercialized beats. These niggas got original beats. So I was like, shit, I could see, like, the, the playing field from afar. Like, that's what the game about to be. It's about to be mixtapes with original beats on there. So somehow I got to get original beats. And I ain't know nobody who made beats. I, my attitude towards the music has always been, I'm going to figure out how to do it myself if I can't. You know, I'm young. I was, like, 17, 18, 19, still living with my mom. I ain't going to lie. I ain't really had no job like that. I didn't think about it like, oh, uh, I could pay a producer for a beat. I was like, you know what? My mom, she did taxes. She always kept a computer around. I was kind of tech savvy. I was like, I'm going to get on the computer. I'm going to Google some shit. I'm going to figure out how to make a beat. And I started making my own beats. It was not fly at the beginning. I ain't going to lie. Like, my original beats, they, sound, they sounded weird. They sounded kind of like some, like, old Odd Future type beats type shit. Like, I'm for real. And, like... As I, like, you know, I stuck with it, but, you know, that's really how I did it. Like, it wasn't even like I really wanted to be a producer. I just wanted to have, like, original sound. I wanted to have something that, like, people could hear and say, like, like that's him. As soon as it cut on, I want them to feel like, like, this is a whole original thing. You know what I'm saying? And that's pretty much it, man. It ain't really, like, a, a fucking, like, super crazy story. It was just, like, uh, I'm a student to the game. Like, just as much as I love to rap or, or make a beat, I love hip hop in general. Like I'm a student to like MCing. Like I looked up to like like the textbook arts of rapping. Like even though I'm a down south nigga, I liked all aspects of hip hop. Like I listen to Nas, I listen to Wu Tang, I listen to Mad Lib, Quasimodo, motherfucking uh the Far Side, Souls of Mischief. Like I had like a real era where I. I liked like lyrical like rap and like then I got into like gangster rap then I got into screws and then I just started to like appreciate hip hop as a whole man and you know that's the story bro like I'm just I, I love hip hop bro I, I mean that shit I love hip hop to the core even if I wasn't making it I I still be jamming it I DJ too like I just love to be immersed in the art of of the music man I mean it. No, that's what's up. That's what's up. That's hella. That's hella fire to know, man. Like, I, I look at you as one of them legends out there, dude. For real. Thanks. And they even Bro. know. I thought you was older. The way the way you do this, I thought you was older. Like you got the way you the way you the way your shit is. It's just like it's got history in it already, bro. Like it's like you've I appreciate been in that, bro. Years, goddamn, and we ain't even that old. You know what yeah. I'm talking about? You seem younger, like, though. Like, for real, like, you seem like, when you hear your music, it's mature, it's professional. But now I'm talking to you, you seem like a, you seem like someone who still kind of has that fire igniting in them to make more shit. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, man. I could put it like this. My uncles, I, have, I got an uncle, he used to have a rap group 
like as far as like other than Wayne and like the people I listen to, like someone who directly around me inspired me to make music. I have I got an uncle, his name uh Big Ant. He had a rap group called LOD, Life of Drama. They like one of the only rap groups I know of, like from Tyler, Texas, like from the jump. I'm I was born in Beaumont, but like my roots are really in Tyler, Texas. That's where most of my family from. But like they the ones who really I looked up to them because he had like I Another friend, I consider him my uncle, but he not directly related to me. But his he is best friend, his name Dale, but they call him Freaky Dale. He would do the beats and uh Big Ant would rap. He had another partner named JP, and that was the whole group. And they had a partner named Chris who would sing the hooks for him. But I would always they uh for a little while, I'm sorry I'm getting scattered brain. I used to live at my grandma's house and it was kind of like a, a almost like a big mama's like kind of thing. Like we had all this family living in one spot. It was me, my mom, my brother, my grandma, two of my aunts. They got a son each and Big Ant stayed there too. Big Ant had his own space in the back where he would record his music. And I would always come in there. I probably like 15, 16. I'm like, Big Ant, let me rap on the track. Big Ant, let me rap on the track. They would never let me rap on the track until like one day. One day they're like, all right, let me hear what you got. And I finally got on there. But they was the ones who I really looked at like right in front of me that was doing it. Like, I want to do it. Like, and they sound was like heavily influenced by Screwed Up Click. It was real Texas sounding. And, you know, that's really where like, I guess you could say like the maturity of my sound. Like, I, I always looked at it like, you know, what you put on the record it'll come back to you. Like you could listen okay. to a lot of my older, my older shit. I, I was saying some reckless shit. I ain't going to lie. Like some of my older shit, like 47 chambers of the dungeon. I was saying some reckless shit on there. But as I, as I matured, I started thinking about it. Like, you know, I'm not trying to preach to nobody on the mic, but I look at it like, you know, manifestation is real. Like what you spit, nah. what you say with, what you say with your words, it, it'll come back to you. So, your like, words you know, create atoms, God damn it. Exactly. Like, yeah. motherfuckers who, who rap, you know what I'm saying, all the negativity, words. like, I ain't got nothing against it, but, you know, I can't feel that because, like, I don't want people to hear my music and think, like, like, all he got something to say is just negative. You know what I'm saying? I want people to hear my music and be able to, like... I want people to hear my music and be able to, like, coast to it, you know, like, live life to it. Roll up a blunt to this shit. Cruise with your girl to this shit. I used to crack jokes. I, I always wanted my music to be the backdrop to bad bitches putting makeup on in the mirror. Swear to God, like, bad bitches, bad bitches getting ready to go out at night. I want them to be playing some Dreddy Franks in the mirror while they putting their makeup on and shit. That's not like ball and shit. Yeah. Oh, God. Swear to God. But Real that's, shit. That's, that's well, that's that's fucking that's motivative as shit. I ain't that's that's real shit. Good aspiration. For real. Right. For real. I mean, better than most. That's how like, I, I wanna do like everybody I agree with the whole like manifestation stuff and also it's like when you put out when you say negative stuff, it's like um the self fulfilling prophecy concept where like, mm -hmm. if you say like mm -hmm. some negative shit's gonna happen, like your attitude makes it so like when you're in a situation where that could happen, it, it will turn you to do that act or it will come. And, and you, you believe mm -hmm. that. that's the crazy. That's the biggest part about it. You believe that shit you say. That's what makes the shit come true. You yeah. know, so hey. Hey. I don't know if everybody, but everybody believe that shit they put on them pins and rap, dog. You know, whether it's depression or fucking gangster shit, you know. They yes. put their, their mind to it, and that shit that shit comes back for real tenfold. Yes, and I talked about that with the um, the, like the uh, the funk kids who are cosplaying as like, like you know, horrorcore rappers, and they're like not yeah. at all. Like they, I mean, they, they not like that. It's, nah, it, but you know, I can't I can't put nobody down for making you know if they inspired by that. Like you know, I come from that. Like some of them shades was definitely on like like my first like mixtape and you know like I put it like this hmm how can I put this man like what you influenced by man I'm trying to pick my words right I'm real picky on how I pick my words bro like everybody I feel like I feel like when when you come out when you first start rapping 
you going to have like that motherfucker that you trying to shadow because you haven't really come into your originality. Like mm -hmm. if you would have met me at 16, everything I was doing was trying to be like Lil Wayne. Like Dreddy Franks right now is not like how I was when I was 16. I was trying to mirror Lil Wayne to a T. It wasn't nope. until I turned like fucking like, I say probably like 23, 24, I started realizing like this is really what Dreddy Franks is. Like I I done some original shit like probably from 47 Chambers forward, but I'll say probably right at if I really gotta put a project on it, I probably say like Manga World. Like Mon I, I did this series of tapes called Manga World where I like drew the I do all my, my album art too. I, I did these cover art where I tried to make myself look like a manga. Like I'm real deep in the anime, so I tried to make the cover art look like like a page out of a manga and i feel like when i hit manga world like volume one volume two volume three i was like this is like really some original shit like i can't find nobody else that's doing it like this i don't mean i'm better than nobody i just mean like when i listen to this shit this shit sound like one to one and the, my whole point i'm trying to make back to the you know the funk the funk kids you know what i'm saying a lot of people they you know they haven't found their originality. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't dissing on nobody. I'm just being 100. Like, a lot of people, they gonna ride the wave. You know, that's what we say in our generation. Some people, they gonna ride the wave. They see the wave that's popping. They gonna say, that's the wave. That's the easiest way for me to get on. But I feel like it's so much more admirable. I don't want to say to go against the grain, but to say, I just want to be me. You know what I'm saying? At one point, like, that's how I felt. I was like, I just want to be me. I, I can't project like i'm anybody else i just want to make the music that i want to hear i don't hate on nobody else's music i don't put nobody else down like oh you make that type of shit woo, woo, woo. I don't, man make what you want to make because if it make you feel good it make you feel good but for me i'm true to the funk the f-u-n-k you know i started out with the p-h-o-n-k but like i make p-funk like i'm true to like the 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 g-funk the p-funk like, I could go past, like, just the G-Funk. I listen to, like, disco and shit. A lot of my melodies and my beats is influenced by, like, Zapp and Roger and, like, Atlantic Star and, and like, Gap Band. You know, I listen to disco, man. I'll be, like, riding in my car, literally smoking a blunt, listening to straight disco, bro. It's I love feel-good music. Like, music to me is like a drug, bro. It triggers, like, dopamine in my head where, like, like I'll make the stank face. Like, you know, when I'm feeling some shit, I make a face like... Like, man, this shit jamming type Damn. shit. And it's just something about it, bro. It's something about good music. Like, regardless of what the genre is, you know when it's hit, it hits a chord with you and you just, like, you can run that hoe over and over. I feel like good music has replay value. Like, no matter how many times I press replay, this motherfucker is hitting every single time like a good blunt. Like, a good blunt don't never get old. You roll up another blunt, it's like, nigga, don't matter how high I am, that bitch is hitting every single time. That's how I feel about the funk, man. Like, true to the funk, for real. For real. That's where, like, God. the roots of it shit comes from, those. Like, that's why it's important to, like, mm -hmm. listen to shit like that. Like, People always make fun of the, the hip of the hop and uh, don't stop a rocket to the bang, bang. Like, but it's like, come on, like that shit. I like that flow. I like the the old kind of sound. It's like, um, it kind of, um, it's a Bro. different perspective, you know? Hell oh, yeah, man. You say that, bro. I be listening to a lot of LL Cool J, like. I really hit a, a wall, bro. Like, I was working overnight, man. I used to stock a store overnight. And, you know, I was trying to balance making music with working. And it really had me, like, hitting, like, a creative wall where I couldn't even come up with no lyrics. So I started listening to, you know, different types of shit. And you'd be surprised. I started listening to a lot of, like, 80s shit. Like, I started listening to, like, like LL Cool J, Mama Said Knock You Out. That's one of my favorite albums, like, just of recently. Like, that's an old-ass album. This is the type of person I am. I'll listen to an old-ass album, but it'll be, like, new to me because I haven't, like, really, like, dived into, like, studying yep. it. Like, like LL Cool J, uh, what's it called? Uh, damn, what's the song called? It's one he going off. He basically talking about, uh, you know, uh, cars with the booming system. Cars ride by with the booming system. He goes so hard on that bitch. You, you know it's funky, funky, funky because you heard it from his seat. A gem that you love that don't get no airplay. Strictly for yeah. riding. Like, they I swear to God, like, 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 the world for real during his time, too, though. Oh, God. You say what? For real. Oh, God. Like, 
Like, I don't, I don't know, bro. I'm one of them people, like, I could never put down the forefathers. You know, like, I'm not one of these people that's, like, going to hate on, like, where hip-hop started. Because, you know, I could find some shit I like as far back as the 80s. Like, I could probably find a Run DMC song. I'm like, yo, that bitch go hard. Like, that's like, true. I, I, what I appreciate about that era, this is all I'm going to say. I appreciate how, how hard that they rapped on the mic like they they emphasis that they put on their words like my uh Adidas. like they like right back in the 80s bro like it was real like like they vocals the beats were very like very like abstract like simplistic like they ain't really have no chords it was just like hard basing and kicks yeah. and snares yeah. and shit and like some DJ scratches in the background, but like they flows was just so like in your face, like mm, mm, like bro, like the flow's not like that no more, bro. Like I, I ain't got no problem with how music, you know, evolves. But like I'm like I said before, I'm a student to the game, bro. Like I could go back and study everything, bro. Like I be bumping Biggie. Like sometimes, like Biggie, one of my favorite lyricists. When I when I'm stuck on trying to like figure out like a flow to like. Fit, bro, I go bump some Biggie because Biggie flow is like so textbook. Like how he like chop. He I love the way he break down syllables. Like when he say S car go, my car go one sixty. Like that's just yeah. so barber, bro. Like I don't think like I'm one of them people, bro. Like I could like find like um one moment in his song and be like, bro, did you hear what he fucking said right there? He said S car go, oh, my bro. car go. 160 like i'm one of them niggas like and don't let me be high as fuck off no weed like i will literally sit back and like like bro did you hear what the fuck he just said like that bar right there was fucking stupid like i'm right. one of them people and like i did you say what that resonate too deep with, with me <laughs> oh god bro like i'm a technical person when it comes to the music bro i'm technical all the way down to the snare bro i'm technical all the way down to the hi-hat like i'm so technical with the music like, we could talk about it. Like, I don't, like, listen to music because, like, like when I want to make melodies, sometimes I'll just, like, play some shit and play it over and over and over again just to get a bass line. Like, if, I, if I'm having trouble making a bass line, I'll just look up a song that I feel like is very intricate in the bass lines, like some fucking SOS band. I love SOS band because they bass lines. Like, I love them, like, funky-ass bass lines. Like, that's how technical I am. I will like break down a song. Music to me is like alchemy, bro. Like literally, it's almost like a science to me. Like I feel like making music is almost like as close as you gonna get to being an alchemist. Like no corny shit because it's like you making something damn near out of nothing. Like yeah, we using tools, but how can you grasp music? It's like a phenomenon. Like it touches you, but you can't really touch it. But it grasps you. It grasps your heart. It grasps That's your soul. Like you can't lie. Like Exactly, bro. Like it's the closest you're gonna come to being like a wizard or an alchemist, bro. To me, making really? music. It's you like sonic <laughs> for real, bro. It's like sonic alchemy, bro. Yeah. Something like that. I don't know. I'm not no expert, but like you know, I used to watch full metal alchemist, you know what I'm saying? Like and I feel like music, like that's the close you're gonna come to like, you know what I'm saying, being an alchemist, bro, to me, you know what I'm saying? On on word for real. You do but I ain't trying to take over the whole thing. Bro, I do all my melodies, bro. I do all my melodies. Pretty much, like, 98% of my music is, like, all original. Like, I play all the chords. You know, I, I sample every now and then. But, like, all my chords are original, bro. I do all my shit. Like, like I'm sitting right in front of my keyboard right here. This is my keyboard right here. Like, I do all this shit. Like, right here. I'm at the motherfucking desk right now, bro. We need that's that, that, that shit, yo, for real. Real shit, like that. That it's it's like cliche as fuck to say, but that's what hip hop needs, bro. As niggas like you, bro. Real shit. <laughs> yeah. Real shit, bro. Like, it, bro. It's watered down with everybody else already, bro. Your unique as shit. Yeah. There's not. I can't think of it. only motherfuckers I can think of to to that that I'm like, oh yeah, that's like some dready shit. That nigga currency, some some quick, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That ass. That's the only you, you, yeah. no one else that you could really but that's unique as shit to me, dog, because everybody else is trying to be like the same person almost, you know. Yeah. 
I know exactly what you mean. I feel like that's going back to the motherfuckers want to ride the wave. I feel like people are truly scared to be themselves. Like people are scared to bring something that's truly against the grain, but not forcing it. You know, it's it's easy to try and force some shit, but like when you truly being yourself, I feel like that's naturally different. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's it's always gonna be influenced and everything. Like I could I told you everybody who influenced me. It's funny you say you name currency. Currency when people influence me to rap the way I rap because I listen yeah. to currency and I pay attention to bars. Currency bars, I call it like reality rap because he yeah. he rapping oh, what he living. Yeah. He not he not rapping nothing fake. He not rapping, you know what I'm saying, shooting up the club and nothing like that. He rapping about even if he just rapping about getting high, going, you know what I'm saying, cruising in his low rider, you know what I'm saying, smoking a yeah. bitch out. That that's his reality. You know what I'm saying? So how can you listen to that and be like, that that nigga don't be doing that? I feel like that's the ultimate that's, you know, any, anyone could be doing on that level type shit, you know. Anyone like exactly. I feel rap. like Exactly, bro. And I feel like that's what people relate to more than anything. I feel like rap it's almost cliche because you know you would think that rap is supposed to be like like stunting on the listener like i'm rapping about some shit that you can't do like in reality it's like i feel like more people want to hear some shit that they can relate to like even if it's just like some cruising music like shit if i'm cruising in my whip you can cruise in your whip too you cruise to this and I, that's why i fuck with currency or somebody like larry june or primo mm -hmm. rice it's, it's a lot of cats right now that make reality music and i feel like you know like you said i feel like the game is watered down but when you look underneath all that it, you know the real ones they not gonna get they true props but like if you a dig like i'm a i'm a crate digger bro i'm a, I'm a youtube digger like I'm, I'm one of the people i will dig to find the gems i will dig to find the good music and I feel like there are people out there just like us that that they willing to dig to find the good music. And when you find it, it's so much worth it. You know, it's worth it so much more because, you know, you resonate with that. I resonate with music like Currency because I call it boss music. It's like it's music that you boss your life up to. Like, even if you're not bossing to his level, you can hey. still play that and aspire to, like, take steps to boss up to be there or maybe you know what i'm saying in your it's own realm it's the same yeah. shit though you know mm -hmm. facts big facts it's hard to listen to that like you know like drill like shit like it's just like hard to like hear someone screaming in your ear how they have like more money than you or and it's like yeah like, calm down like i can't I can't, bro. Like, I can't. I don't listen to that type of shit, bro. Like, I don't, I ain't hating, but, you know, like, I feel like, you know, frequ frequencies are real, bro. Like, negative frequencies, positive frequencies. Like, I, I want to listen to music that's talking up, not talking down. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of niggas, like, they talk down to the listener. Like, they rap into you telling you how they doing some shit that you not on. It's like, these niggas supporting your music while you stunting on them. I don't want to make music that sound like I'm stunting on the listener. I want to make music, like I said, I want to make some shit that make a motherfucker feel like, like you could do it too, nigga. We could ball together. I, yeah. I don't see life as a competition. I don't see nobody as my competition. Like I want to make some shit that motherfuckers boss their life up to. Like you know, some shit that people can really live life to. That's the best way I could see it. You know, I don't, I don't. I don't really listen to none of that that drill shit or none of that trap shit. Like, I need some shit that's funky, man. That's the best way I can put it. I need some shit that's funky. You know, I can't even go to the club no more. I'm just being 100. I, I ain't even just trying to go on no tangent or no rant. You can't even go out to the club and, like, you know, niggas don't dance in the club no more. I'm just being 100. Motherfuckers don't dance in the club because every song playing is some drill, shoot them up, kill some shit. Like, they don't, like, every now and then... Every now and then they'll play some old school. You know, I'm in Texas, so they'll every now and then they'll play like some throwback Texas shit, like some Fat Pat, you know what I'm saying, Tops Drop or some little Kiki Southside. And then they go right back to the drill, right back to the trap, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, you know, I, I hate to be, I don't want to say I hate, you know, but I don't always want to be that motherfucker living in the past. But, man, I wish 
I could go to like a '90s house party. Like I look back at clips of motherfuckers. Like, like, bro, they was all getting it. I feel like back in the '90s and the '80s and the '70s or whatever, you was a lame motherfucker if you wasn't dancing. You go to the right. club now, it's so right. many motherfuckers with their back against the wall trying to be hard and shit. On the phone. I feel like that's the. Oh God, I feel like that's the problem with the culture is that yeah, motherfuckers care too. They care too much about being hard yeah. than having a good time. Like. I want to make music that when it come on, I hope it electrify motherfuckers. I hope it make a motherfucker feel like nigga two steps to this, do something. You know what I'm saying? Boogie down to this, nigga, because niggas don't boogie no more. Niggas don't dance no more. You know what I'm saying? If I had to, on God, if I had to break it down, bro, they gonna play like two, three songs that the bitches could twerk to. They gonna run back to the trap shit for the, all the trap niggas in the club, and then they got they might. Mix in like maybe one old school track, maybe two old school tracks, and then it's just right back to the you know what I'm saying the trap shit. But it's like, like if you really ever stood in a real function, like a party or whatever, it's like the energy be off, bro. That's why I don't even like going out. Like the energy be so off, and I and I put it to the music. If the music ain't feel good, niggas is not in that bitch feeling good, bro. I promise you. Like the music is really the fuel to the atmosphere. So I feel like. My, what the way I feel about what's going on right now is there's not enough feel good music. Everybody just makes some shit that sound like, like you know, I'm drilling my ops. I'm, a, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a do a, I'm spinning the block. I'm doing this. We gonna get our get back. You know, I'm spinning back on these niggas. Blah blah blah. I don't be want to hear none of that shit, bro. I, yeah, I like man. I ain't hating on niggas. I don't want to hear none of that shit, bro. I'm cool with like the, like the the craft of the shit like you know what i'm saying the art form you know what i'm saying i don't do the trends i want to hear the art i want to hear the skills i want to hear the bars i want to hear player ass beats player ass rhymes i want to hear some shit that i feel like i could boss up to because that's the shit i want to make that's the shit i want to hear and i feel like you know, to each his own, everybody not going to be like us. Everybody not going to be built like how we build. Some niggas, they came up to that shit. That's what they like. That's that's they OG shit to them. Like, them niggas probably came up to, like, Chief Keith or Lil Reese to them niggas. That's what they look up to. That's what they want to make. I didn't come up to that. I came up to, like, motherfucking Fat Pat, Lil Kiki, Big Hawk. I came up to niggas with jiggy-ass flows on, on Pimp type beats. I came up to niggas that had Rolexes on and Cuban links and like niggas was fly. That's okay. what I wanted to make. I wanted to make like fly pimp type music. I'm not no pimp, but I like pimp type music, like some shit a nigga pop his collar to. Like, man, that shit right there. Man. That's your player, bro. Like, and I feel like, you know, I feel like that's the issue with the game, bro. You know, everybody makes shit that they feel like the next man want to hear. I feel like it's a whole lot of yes man music right now like niggas be yes man in the studio just trying to make the shit that they think the world want to hear i feel like niggas need to make some shit that the world needs to hear you know what i'm saying so yeah let me get that yeet snare or some shit like it's like no i don't want to hear that same snare again the thing oh like, god i don't want to hear that um there's another thing too with the party thing and, and going out i mean like i if i want to hear like good music and go out, i either go to like um smaller like under underground shows like or i mean tara reed is in that underground but like he brought those kind of type of people with him or a separate show but if i really want to have fun locally i go to the alt rock shows i go to the indie rock shows i go to the blah, 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 blah. like that's where you're re that's where people are really yeah. dancing or like that i mean around me and stuff like i don't yeah. rap shows to me are um kind of, sometimes can be a little stale to me it's like one in one in four of them are like really a good time so i often just go to the rock shows near me um i want to bring another point up mm -hmm. though uh you put up um what was that uh players night on spotify um and that was you put it so like it was two songs and all the songs were mixed mm -hmm. together right i love that way mm -hmm. of posting music and you it, when you said the youtube thing when you go on youtube and you look it's often those mixtapes are all one big video like do you think that's a, a preferred way of listening to music is like the whole thing through i think uh not enough people that are uh, younger do that and um i mean not enough people at all anymore really do that but really if you appreciate music do you think that's the way to do it with just one file all the way through like you posted man i'll tell you like this I got that from DJ Screw. like that's me like chopping all that music like a lot of that music was like 
some of the homies music like i had slim gorilla on there doms on there but those are their tracks and i just like slowed them down and chopped them because i'm a i love dj screw but i always loved how he would blend like this is going me going back to me being a student of the game i love turntablism i love how like mixing one track into another track blending them together like transitioning and i do feel that way too like um i'll bring up a partner of mine that i used to be in a group with like he was one of the first people i seen do it p2 the gold mask because we we used to make music and um we would upload our shit to soundcloud like we would make upload albums and we do a track by track and i remember uh we was talking about it one time and he was talking about like you know like if you really pay attention to the numbers it's almost like the numbers trickle down as you go through the album it's almost like people nowadays have a hard time listening to a project like you can look at the numbers and it's like you know track one might have a thousand plays track two 800 plays track three 600 plays like they going down and down because motherfuckers are not playing the whole thing in in this entirety so he was one of the first people that he was like man i'm just about to put all the tracks in one playlist like like in one mix and upload it like that and you know that's not why i did it I did that because, you know, I'm a huge fan of DJ Screw, but I also feel exactly like your sentiment. Like, I feel that way, like that, you know, I feel like nowadays a lot of listeners, their attention spans are shorter. So, like, like me as a lyricist, I ain't going to lie. Most of my songs, they one verse. It's a hook, verse, hook, and it's over. Like, some people hear my shit, they be like, why don't you do two verses? Because it's like, bro, everybody is not tuned in for the same reason like i always try and put myself in the perspective of the listener like you got some people who've been listening to my music they know what they're going to get then you got them new listeners that it's like i have to grasp their attention to bring them into my world in like two minutes or less like two minutes 30 seconds tops like motherfuckers are not listening to a five minute song they're not listening to a song with three verses on there unless you got like like two features on there and they heavyweights like that people want to hear it everybody is not listening to like a five minute song three verses three hooks like you know and then you make a whole album like that motherfuckers are not tuning in like that i'm just being 100 like eric like i'm for real bro like motherfuckers are not tuned in like that no more bro it's almost sad because it's like if you like the lyricist, like I, I'm I consider myself a lyricist, but I try and like not to go over people's head with my bars. But if you like the lyrical, lyrical motherfucker, then motherfucker won't come on the mic like Eminem, you probably feel like out of place because it's like, how do I convey that I'm a lyricist and give y'all these bars without, you know what I'm saying, numbing y'all heads where y'all like I, I don't want to hear all that. I just want to hear a vibe. A lot of motherfuckers just want to hear a vibe, bro. They just want to hear some shit that they vibe to. And, you know, I notice a lot of shit like music. I, sometimes I overthink music where I think like everything got to have a message. Some of these motherfuckers just want to hear some shit like some little B, like motherfuckers just saying, suck my dick, bitch, suck my dick, bitch, over and over again or some shit. And it like, it just resonates with them. I'm just being 100. That's like, true. That's true. Like, lyric, lyricism to me is like, it's like to each his own. Cause like, what do you consider lyri- lyrical? Like, could it be like, somebody just blowing your mind with some bars or could it be somebody saying some shit like like dj quick saying if it don't make dollars it don't make sense i'm like shit that's some wordplay shit you know what i'm saying i feel like it's to each his own bro and i'm not just trying to get long-winded to your point but um that's really why i did it bro i i just wanted to uh it was really for dj screw that's why i made players night like that players night is really like a, a slowed and chopped tape but I have considered releasing the album just like that, like just making all the tracks in one continual extended play, because I do feel like songs get overlooked. You know, like I, I love all my songs like they my children. So sometimes when I, I have a song that I'm like, yo, this is my favorite song. If they don't get the plays that I feel like it deserve, I get discouraged because I'm like, y'all like this track. But to me, this track right here, this is the one where I was, preaching game but you know it's crazy as creators cash probably tell you this we don't really get to pick our hit like it's the fans that tell you what the hit is yeah. for real you don't really get to pick what your hit is they tell you what the hit is if that motherfucker banged them that's the hit 
Like, I done made some songs, and I'm like, that's really what y'all think the hit is? Like, I'll be looking at the numbers. Like, that motherfucker got, like, 10,000 likes. That's the motherfucker y'all think is the hit? All right, bro. I thought this one was going to be the hit. This motherfucker only got 50 likes. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit crazy, bro. You know? Yeah. And I feel, me I feel like that. Me and Killer C made a song. Me and Killer C made a song. Oh, and then yeah. Somebody hits me up, and they're like, I listen to that shit whenever I'm at the gym. And I'm like, yo, like, that was just like some. Me and Killer C talking about some gang, like, you know what I'm saying, some hard shit. But, like, I didn't think yeah. it would be like that, you know what I'm saying, popular and shit. It just happens. Yeah, you be that too, man. The stuff that yeah. resonates or that you don't know. Leave me God. Being Shout out my boy Killer C, too. Cash? You said, you said leave me like like leave me alone was one of your like earlier made songs you didn't like think much of it because you made it on your phone yeah that's like one of your song. biggest songs yeah. i didn't even mix that song either that's the i didn't even know how to make music at that point either being this weird as shit that 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 be one of the biggest songs that i had it was fucking weird Alrighty, what's a song that you um released that um you did not think people would like enjoy that much or are you surprised blew up let me think, man. Cash, you know, um, I'm ready as well with this question as well. I got a song called Macology 101. It's a sample of Do or Die, uh, Poe Pimp. And, um, like, I played the melodies, but, you know, I know a way to pretty much, like, uh, subtract vocals out of a song. So I kind of, like, use some of the vocals from the hook for the beat and it all kind of like was in key together so it sound good like i really try to do my own rendition of it but you know a lot of people fuck with that song macology 101 i'm like let me hear you say m-a-c-k-ology let me hear you say m-a-c-k-ology i didn't think it was gonna really bang like that but a lot of people fuck with that hoe they be sharing it they be tagging me in it and you know that was off my tape um Something for the trunk. Something for the trunk. It's called Macology uh, 101. And yeah, that's definitely a song to me that I was like, I ain't, I ain't really think it would go over like that for real. I thought it was just like some laid back, you know, chill shit. It, you know, like you, like I said, you don't get to pick your hits. I thought motherfucking, uh, I got a song on there. I think it was called, um, damn, I can't remember. It was definitely a song on that. I done made so many albums, bro, but it was definitely another track on that album. I was like, this gonna be the one. This gonna be the one that motherfuckers bumping over and over again. And nope, it was that Macology 101. Bitches be tagging me and that shit and everything. I'm like, alright, that's what y'all fucking with. That's what's up. It's the one where your hands out like this. Um, I'm, I'm looking for it. Yeah, yeah, and I got the, I got like Texas, like in the on the earth in my hand and shit. I drew that picture too. That's nice. Oh, shit. Man. Oh God, that's, bro! That's wild as hell. You got some fucking wild ass yeah. cover. I like, nice. yeah. like, I like how you be showing like, I like how you be showing like, like you be doing homage to old albums and shit. And then you even like, you like creatively come up with your own title for it, and it still is all you can. If you know, you know type shit, bro. Something like, for the trunk. That, yeah, that's incredible yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's I left you one mean, bro. Like. So they cover too. Uh yeah, bro. Thank you, bro. That's just like me, like um, like paying homage, just being a student to the game, bro. It was just like something I started. I can't even remember. Well, really, Forty Seven Chambers is the one that jumped it off. Because if you look at the cover of Forty Seven Chambers, it's almost like three generations. Because I got that shit from Lil B. Lil B. I think it was White Flame album cover, and Lil B's White Flame album cover is homage to a uh, Soldier Slim album cover. I think it's uh, Give Them to a, Give It to Him Raw. And if you look at all three of them album covers, it's all the same, you know, aesthetic. It's like my face with like jet planes, and like it's like a, almost like a war zone, like explosions, and you know, a tank right here, a fighter jet right here, mm-hmm. and like. You know, that's why I really started off with like, you know, paying homage in the album covers type shit. Yeah, that's 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 inspirational shit. Yeah. Oh talk. God, appreciate it, bro. So um yeah. I got a question that um some fans kind of talked about on some comments of some videos. Um you don't be doing music videos like that. Like what's why do you not 
do that. Man, you know it's crazy, bro. It's not like I'm against doing music videos. Like, I always look at myself like my own director. And, you know, I want to do more music videos, but it's like I'm such a cinematic person. Like, I'm so picky about, like, how I would want a music video to be made. Like, I got some music videos, but they just chill music videos. Like, you know, the, the Visions music video. That I shot that at my cousin's house. It was, like, on, like, Christmas Eve, and, like, we were just in there drinking or some shit. But I always looked at a music video, like, I want to do some shit, like, like it almost looked like a movie. Like, the fucking, like, Biggie Hypnotized video, when they doing the fucking, like, the, the 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 motherfucking chasing they reversing the car and shit through the parking garage yeah. and shit like i just put it like this man like i feel like you know like some of the rappers i looked up to like mac dre mac dre ain't, ain't had no damn music videos like at all but he, he like a bay area legend like he, his music was like going crazy in the bay even while he while he was alive Oh. Or even like MF Doom. MF Doom didn't have a whole lot of music videos. Like I look at it like I look at it like, you know, the rare shit, it's gonna be hard to find. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I I truly believe that I do need to shoot more music videos and I and I I will. That's a promise to my fans because I feel like they do deserve more visuals. But for me, it, it's always been about the music music itself like to me making music like selling dope bro like no no metaphor intended like it's like if i package it a certain way no matter what the fiend's gonna get it you know what i'm saying i, I might not have a thousand music videos but if i got a thousand albums they gonna come and get it bro and right. you know for me it's just been like okay i'll put it like this i've always wanted like my own personal videographer like this is going back to me like making my own beats and shit. It is also about, you know, I'm I'm a cut out the middleman type of nigga. Like I'm like, why would I pay you to do it when I could learn how to do it myself? Like like this is no yeah. corny anime reference. If I could shadow clone myself like Naruto, you wouldn't have to worry about the music videos. I shoot my own videos because I have the visions up in my head. I try yeah. I tried shooting a music video one time with my homeboy because, like, that's how I look at it. I want my people involved. I let my partner shoot me a video one time. I'm like, bro, you're not moving the camera enough. You're just standing still. you like, you know, everybody not going to get that that view that you want. And for me, it was like I didn't always have the money to get a video. Like, the few music videos I had, like, they was, that was off the love. Like, the Visions music video. That was shot by one of my partners that I used to skate with. I used to go to the skate park in my old hood. It's called Noble Noble Skate Park. They tore that bitch down. It was in the west side of my city. I always shout out the west on all my music. That's my hood. But I had a partner. His name, Cody Sanders. He rollerblade. I skateboard. But one day we was at the skate park. He, had, he got a fucking $3,000 fucking like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Big yeah, bitch yeah. camera. With the, game, with the red yeah. Shit, yeah. Oh, God. And one day we was skating and I don't know what made me ask him, but I was like, bro, what you think about shooting me a music video with that hoe? And he never shot a music video before. And he was like, he he liked the, the challenge. He was like, dude, I love to. I've never done it before, but I'll do it. And he ended up doing two videos for me. He did Visions and he did Major Kusanagi. That's like two of the only music videos I got. I probably got like five music videos total. Visions, Major Kusanagi, um, motherfucking damn, I'm trying to give them all. Uh, I probably got two more songs I'm missing. I got so many fucking songs. Um, just imagine that's one. That's one of the recent ones I shot. I shot that bitch probably like two, three years ago, and then I did another one. Um, I can't remember the name of that bitch, but I remember because we shot it at this damn venue that I used to perform at all the time. But I probably got like a total of like four or five videos all together. But, you know, I'm, I'm getting long winded, bro. But my whole point is like, for me, it's been like the resources was never there. I never had all the resources to, yeah. you know, get a music video. It was either like I couldn't afford it. I could afford it now. Like if I wanted to pay a motherfucker to shoot a music video. These motherfuckers be taxing though. That's another thing. These motherfuckers be charging like $500, $600 for the music video. Some shit, yeah. Like, nah. That's my point, bro. Like my attitude has always been like even to the recording point. Why would I pay 
50, 60 dollars an hour to go record it, somebody shit. I'm a hard working motherfucker. I could save my money up, buy on Max like I'm sitting in front of, buy this motherfucking microphone right here. It's off camera, but like I always thought about it like exactly. I got one of them bitches too. Literally, I got a scarlet too. My attitude right. has always been cut out the middle, man. Why would I pay to go to somebody else's studio? I could work hard enough. It might take a little while longer, but save my money, buy my own studio equipment. Motherfuckers want to pay me to come record now. That's all. That's how I always looked at it. Like, fuck outsourcing. Like, do it yourself. That's how I always looked at it. Even with the music video shit, if I could shoot my own music video, I could. It wouldn't look dynamic enough. It would look like a selfie video. But, like, that's always been my thing. I am truly a cinematic director like everything i do i see it up here like from my albums to everything the cover art the way i do my beats i do it all myself because i consider myself a perfectionist it nothing is never perfect enough for me bro i just like cut my losses and drop it if it was up to me bro i work on the album until that bitch was perfect it might never drop but i cut my losses and i drop shit that's how I am. I'm truly a perfectionist, even down to my beat. People probably wonder why the beat bangs so hard. It bang that way because if that bitch don't bang, I'm not rapping on it. I don't even rap on other niggas' beats like that because, like, not even trying to be a snob. Everybody don't have that funk. Everybody don't have some shit. Like, the beat got to be dynamic. I'm talking about melodies got to kick in. I don't even like too much rapping on a loop. If something don't kick in, like, a synth for the hook or, like, you know, at the eight-bar interval, like, I, this is me getting back technical. Like, I need instruments to kick in to make the beat feel dynamic around my verse. And this is how I get about everything I do, bro. Like, if I just kept on talking, this is how I am. I'm a technical motherfucker to the point where, like, anybody working with me would probably get pissed off because I'm like, bro, it's gotta be like this, how I see it in my head. And I don't want to fucking annoy somebody like that. That's why I do my own shit. That's why I rap on my own beats, do my own cover art, because I'll be the motherfucker to tell you, hey, bro, do it again. I ain't like the way that cover art look. Can you, like, you know what I'm saying, re-edit it? I ain't like the way that beat, you know what I'm saying? Could you, like, put some shit right here that I ain't like the way you mix my vocals because you, like, you know, tweak it one more time. I get so technical, bro. Like, I just, you know, I just do it myself, bro. I swear to God. I swear to God, that's who I am, bro. I'm really a gotta take notes, though, for real. Like, that's a good way to go about things, honestly. It's um, yeah. it's it's um, some people they just kind of go into it and they're like thinking it's like, um, some startup company and they just like spend a bunch of money on shit and it's like no like, yes it's okay to have an entrepreneurial mindset for it but um, one thing you got to do is first off you got to be a little bit kind of you got to save your money a bit but also it's like, if you know how to do stuff yourself. Then eventually, like, let's say you get more money, then that's when you can tell people, like, how to do it, right? You kind of have to know everything. You kind of have to, as you are, be a student of the game and learn the kind of stupid, annoying... You said earlier in the beginning of the interview, you were like, I'm a nerd. You got to be a nerd with this shit. And it's like, it's true. You got to be a nerd. I mean, every everybody I've interviewed has some minuscule, like obsession that they they fuck with whether it be like anime or fucking pokemon or like they're they like like black metal or some shit like there's always something oh, yeah. right? like and, and um you gotta kind of have oh, like a, a nerdy mindset that um uh it's more about like being smart and like um kind of striving for better you know what i'm saying x you're right you're right it's crazy. Um, you say that um it's crazy you say that because uh, you brought up Pokemon. Like, I do a lot of songs. Like, I'll, I'll be naming albums and songs after Pokemon attacks. I don't even know what started that. But, you know, I got a mixtape called Ice Beam. I got an album called Solar Beam. I got a couple of songs. Like, one of my songs that I feel like everybody fuck with is called Dazzling Gleam. Dazzling Gleam Part 1 and 2. That's a fucking fairy type fucking Pokemon move. Like, I was like, that name sounds so cool. I'm going to name a song after that. I just wanted to... Put that in there because you brought a Pokemon. I'm a huge Pokemon nerd. I'll be like collecting like shiny types and all types of shit. Yeah, solar me. Yeah, this is nice. Oh yeah. god. And obviously the manga <laughs> stuff too with the uh the manga. Oh god, bro. Yes, sir. And Playmaker has some like NB is that 2K? Or some shit. Yes, like, bro. Card or some shit. Yeah. That's lit. Oh, God. Yeah. 
I don't know. I don't. I, I oh, like God. it. But everyone remember 2009, 2010 NBA Jam on Xbox 360. That's that's what I was. Oh playing. God, NBA yeah. Jam. Yeah. That was. Oh yeah. Even was Nintendo. Bro, yeah. Nintendo was fun. They jump so high, bro. Like how high they jump just to dunk that motherfucker was crazy. That shit it was crazy. Animated wow. well. It was cool. On oh, God. Out of this world. <laughs> for real, I, know, I got a question though. Um, what do you think comes harder for you? And it probably ain't neither one of these because you raw shit. But what 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 comes <laughs> difficult for you producing a rapper? Man, as of lately, bro, the rapping, bro, because you know the beats, bro. What's crazy is, bro, like you know the beats. It's almost like they make themselves. Like I kind of sit down. And for me, with the beats, it's crazy. I put it like this, bro. All I need is one piano chord. All I need is one piano chord, like two, three keys, you know what I'm saying? And I could just go off from that. I could build a whole beat off of, like, one piano chord. For me, the rapping comes a little bit harder because, you know, I overthink it. Like, I overthink it like every song has to be a meaning. And it doesn't. Like, it, it's hard to, like, Accept that when you in the process, but like I could be listening to a banging ass beat, and to me the beat, no matter what people say, the beat brings out the rapper. Like you want to challenge a rapper by giving him a hard beat. Like me making my own beats, that's no, that's no, you know what I'm saying, excuse. Like that's it's still the same principle. I could make a hard ass beat, and then I'll be like almost like puzzled by my own beat because I'm like, bro. I want to go so hard on this bitch. I want to wreck this bitch. But at the same time, I don't want to go over people's heads with trying to be too lyrical or too, you know what I'm saying? Too, you know, I don't like too preachy. Somehow I be trying to find that threshold of being witty and saying some player shit, but not being too ignorant. But you know what I'm saying? Understanding my my age gap and also like my listeners. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to rap about some shit that's out of their range of understanding. Man. And I feel like going back to what I'm saying, I'm a technical motherfucker. And sometimes I feel like I'm too technical, even when it comes to the rapping, bro. Sometimes like I just want to just vibe on that hoes. Like you can probably tell I'm talking, bro. I'm technical as fuck. And like even to the rapping, bro, it's it's the rapping that that's that comes harder, bro. Like it's still natural. Like I'm a I'm an MC to the day I die. But it's hard to like find that 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 pocket because you know everybody, you know, this is going back to me saying, you know, a lot of motherfuckers got a short attention span, bro. You have to grasp the listener in less than like two minutes, 30 seconds. Like the average song nowadays, like like under three minutes long, you know, so like to be a technical motherfucker, that's a small space to convey whatever the topic of the song. That's another thing, the topic. I always listen to the beat and feel like the beat has a unwritten topic. Like, if it's a smooth-ass beat, I'm like, man, I could rap about some, like, player-ass shit or some smooth shit for the ladies or whatever. If it's an aggressive-ass beat, I'm like, shit, I could probably rap on this bitch about... You know what I'm saying? Like some real hardcore bars, like how I'm a harder rapper than these niggas or that niggas. You know, I do a nigga like this. Woo woo. Like, it's so much nuances to the writing process that I feel like people overlook. I feel like, you know, simplifying it is better, bro. Cause like, you get too technical with it. Like, I fuck around, sit here. I done done it. Like, probably like last night, I was sitting here and listening to a banging ass beat I made. Sat here bobbing my head hard as shit with my phone out with my notes blank as fuck. Then right now, one rhyme, the beat hard as shit. I got the beat, I can play it right now. Beat hard as shit. Mm. Banging my head up and down. Then right now, one bar. Because I get too technical with it, bro. So, like, to answer your question, it's the bars that come harder, bro. I promise you. The bars, like, it's harder for me. Not, not like it's hard to rap, but it's hard to find that, that sweet spot of... Like, I want to let these niggas know that I'm not no joke on the mic, but at the same time, I don't want to go over niggas' heads. It's that simple. Because, like, I could be a lyrical-ass motherfucker, but everybody don't want to hear ly lyricism. It's sad to say that, but everybody nowadays don't want to hear lyricism. Everybody don't want to hear hippie-hop, you know what I'm saying, and you don't stop, you know, hard-ass bars. You know what I'm saying? Everybody don't want to hear that shit. 
some motherfuckers want to hear some some vibed out shit like some Travis Scott or some Don Tolliver. That ain't necessarily me, but you know, I want to grasp the listeners, bro. Like I have no issue with where I'm at as an artist. I love whoever gravitates toward my music, but I can't lie. Like I wouldn't want more fans. Like if I could reach the whole fucking world, I would have no fucking problem. I just don't want to sell out. I never fucking sell out. I never switch my style to appeal to a, a bigger crowd. But if you gave me, you know, access to the bigger crowd and I could still be myself on the mic, bro. I want to touch the masses with bars, bro. I, I'm one of them people. I still feel like bars matter. I don't give a fuck what the style is. The lyrics will always matter, bro. I feel like it's so many principles of rap that we can't ignore. I feel like as we get older, as we see the 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 styles changing and stuff, I feel like they be trying to X out some of the classic shit, and I'm not with that. I'm I'm a huge advocate for keep the nuances in hip hop. I have no, you know what I'm saying? You know, I ain't got nothing against like the new generation, new styles, none of that. I'm just one of them people like, bro, keep some of the motherfucking original styles in there. Like ciphers. Motherfuckers don't even cipher no more. You can't even get motherfuckers in a circle to, to spit bars back and forth. These niggas don't rap. Everybody use auto tune. I'm not hating. I'm just being honest. You can't bring the auto tune to the cipher. No. Nigga, we in a circle rapping. I'm just being 100. We in a circle rapping. Everybody an auto-tune nigga now. These niggas don't rap. They don't spit bars. They they do little auto-tune singing shit now. Uh, you know what yeah. I'm saying? The cypher dying. Do whatever I want. The cypher dying. I'm running for fun. <laughs> like shit like you that. know what I'm saying? The cypher dying. The DJ to me is dying. Because like I look oh. at the DJ like if, if you really understand like the, the pecking order, it was the DJ who brought the rapper out. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you go back to the 80s, the 90s, the DJ was the motherfucker who had all the recording equipment. The motherfucker goes to the DJ like, yo, record my demo. Or if it's a DJ, he at the club, you slide the nigga your demo, you know, hand him a $100 bill, he play your record. You know what I'm saying? Now the DJ don't even break new artists. Like, even if you go to a local standpoint, even in my city, these DJs don't play local artists they play what they think everybody want to hear they play drake they play future they yeah. play whatever i mean tyler they don't play no local tyler artists they don't play dreddy franks at the function i'm not even like take making it personal like like it's like all about me they don't play any artists from the city and i feel like that's the issue that i see with the game we could get all the way into it it's like the dj has been X'd out because he's not really doing his job. Yeah, the DJ is supposed to make the crowd move, but you go back to the 90s and the 80s, they brought new artists in. Like, they would get on, like, all right, we got this new record from, you know what I'm saying, Cash. Yeah. We got Cash right now. We got to play this new Cash right now. You know what I'm saying? They don't do that shit no more. Now it's all about the streaming. You take your music directly to the stream, to Distro Kids, to Spotify. Yeah. You don't take your music to the DJ no more. That's one of the things that died off. Like, like, there's no relationship with the DJ to the MC. If it is, it's just like some fucking little showcase. I done done it before. You you have a party, motherfucker. It's a party. It's like a college party. They dancing and shit. Then the DJ be like, all right, we got this rapper coming on. Them niggas get mad. They get mad because you breaking up the party. They don't want to hear a nigga rap. It's fucked up, but it's the truth. They don't want to hear some random nigga from down the street rapping. They want to hear Future. They want to hear Drake. And I feel like that's the fucked up part about the game is that how does the new artist break into the game? He has to get his music heard. The crowd don't want to hear a new artist because nobody knows who he is. But he has to play his record to the crowd to get fans. You know what I'm saying? But they don't want to hear his shit because we don't know this nigga. You know what I'm saying? It's fucked up to me. Like that. Like these are all the thoughts that I think about in my head. Like why the game fucked up? Because I, I, I'm one of them people. I want to see prosperity for everybody. I might not get it for myself. I might not be the biggest artist. But what I really want to see is better representation for the independent artists. Like, I thought about this shit. I think independent artists need a union, like a real union. Like, somehow we unionize just to have, like, real rights. Because it's like, as independent artists, we don't really have no rights. We got rights as far as, like, you know, uploading our music to streaming services. But I'm talking about, like, 
like just making my point, bro. Like the independent artist has a hard time coming out and seeing profit. Like think about it, bro. The rap game, one of the only forms of business, because it's a business. It's one of the only forms of business where a motherfucker tell you, you don't got enough followers. Why, why should I pay you for a verse? You only got a hundred followers. Why should, I, why should I pay you for a verse? I got a thousand more followers than you. Think about it. you. You start a clothing line right now. You can come right out and charge for no shirt. Nobody coming to you being like, all right, bro, you don't, you don't got enough followers on your clothing line on, on, on Instagram. I can't buy this shirt. You should give it to me for free. Every other form of business is a service. It's goods and services. Pay me for my service. As a rapper, bro, you come out and it's like, don't nobody know you, so nobody want to pay you right away. So you forced to kind of do this intern type shit. Like, you forced to do shows for free. Like, I done done it. I've been rapping since I was fucking 16. Yeah. I'm 30 now. I got, like, 10 plus years under my belt of doing this shit. I'm talking about pulling up to showcases. Nigga not going to pay me. But he like, hey, I'll let you rock the mic. I done pulled up to college parties. In between them playing songs, they just slide me the mic. Nigga don't do me no intro. Nigga don't cut the music to let me do an intro or nothing. It's just they just start playing my song and I just got to start rapping. It's hard for the independent artist to make a name because we don't have resources, bro. I'm big on this shit. We do not have resources. Like, you can compare this shit to, like, the hardcore bands. They kind of got some resources. Like, they could, like, go on tour and play a room full of like 20 fucking people, but they still got merch to sell and they could still make their cover to get the motherfucking hotel room tonight or whatever. Every rapper don't think like that. Like nowadays, yeah. some rappers got merch and shit, and niggas coming around, but it's like the independent rapper truly does not have enough resources to prosper. Like I was watching the Money Man interview. I'm not even a Money Man fan. But he is a motherfucking financial guru. You got to be to be a rapper and have a name Money Man. I was watching this interview he did with motherfucking um, DJ Academics. He said it costs at least 200 grand at least to promote a single. Like if you want to promote a single and, and like have that whole on, on the plateau with like a Drake or a Future. Yes. As an independent artist, you need 200 grand. Two, three hundred yeah. grand to promote that bitch. Now think about that. What average independent nigga rapping out his house got two hundred, three hundred grand to promote a motherfucking single? We don't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm being one hundred. It's like, it's like, it's crazy, bro. Because we fighting against the machine. And then if you want to get deeper into the politics, we competing with each other. Because you got a lot of niggas who don't want to see the next man shine. I could talk about this shit for hours. Rap the only motherfucking genre where niggas act like two niggas can't blow up at once. Like, we could talk about this shit. We could, like, just make an example. Cash, you out of Alabama, right? Yeah. You out of Alabama, right? Let's say, you said, let's say you trying to come out right now. You, like, the biggest nigga out of your city, up and coming. It's another nigga down the street. He rap. He want to get on. He looking at you like, he not looking at you like a peer. He looking at you like, like, fuck that nigga. I got to get on first. Like, niggas act like two yeah. niggas cannot blow up at once. Like, you, you think local niggas going to support other local niggas? Nah, bro. It's like, like, I'm watching the Spice One interview. I'm just like, I know I'm everywhere, but I'm just trying to summarize this shit. I was watching the Spice One interview, and he said some shit. It sounded like some no-brainer shit, but he said, you'll never know who the best rapper is because he too busy getting hated on. And I know that sounds like some no-brainer shit, but think about it. It's so political that, like, you could rap. The nigga down the street is like, well, my cousin rap, so fuck that nigga. My cousin got to get on first. Like, niggas, two niggas can't blow up at once. Like, that nigga can't blow, I can't blow. We don't even got to be, like, him blowing don't got shit to do with me blowing. Like, him skyrocketing right now don't got nothing to do with putting my music down. Like, if anything, I'm looking at him blowing up like, shit, he make it, I'll make it. But niggas don't look at it like that. Niggas look at it like, I got to come out first. I got to come out first. Fuck these other niggas. I got to come out first. Niggas do not, like, this is something I had to learn. Like, when I was younger, I used to get real tight about other niggas not supporting my music. I ain't talking about fans. I'm talking about rappers. Like, niggas that follow me and shit. Like, niggas want to make a track or some shit. Nigga don't even support my album. Nigga don't. Like, you know what I'm saying? I drop an album, nigga don't retweet it. Nigga don't be like, hey, y'all go check out Dreddy's new album. I used to get real tight about that shit. Then I realized niggas indirectly see you as competition and it's fucked up 
niggas do not support what they niggas do not support what they not involved in and that go all the way around that go to the producers like i rap and i produce so i can see the game from multiple ways like you make an album if that nigga don't got no beats on your album he not gonna support your album he not gonna be like yo go check out cash album because he don't got no fucking beats on there now if you get that nigga some space to have two beats on there then he gonna be like oh yeah go go check out cash album i produce track five and track six that's the fakest part of game to me is that as independent artists Yes, that support matter. The support from your peers matter because if you got some fans that I don't have, niggas, like, you might have a thousand more followers than I got that don't know of me, but if you tell them, hey, go check out Dreddy, you just open the gate just slightly from some of your fans to fuck with my shit, and it don't take away from none of your shit. We could collab, we could, like, mix this shit together, and it all work. It all worked for both of us, but niggas do not see the game like that. A lot of niggas, bro, they cannot see beyond themselves. If it don't involve them, they don't give a fuck. And that's the fucked up part about the game to me. And that's both ways. That's rappers, that's producers. Niggas do not see beyond themselves. If they don't got no beats on your album, they not supporting your shit. If nigga don't got no feature on your album, they not supporting your shit. And I didn't experience this shit being my own everything. Like, niggas fear a self-made nigga. Like, niggas fear a motherfucker that can do it themselves. He make his own beats. He, he write his own shit. He do his own cover art. Niggas feel like it ain't nothing that they can offer you because you do it all yourself. Like, you would think niggas would, like, fuck with that and want to gravitate or Nah, niggas fear that because they like, well, it ain't nothing I can offer him. So, you know, niggas kind of, like, keep their distance, bro. Like, the rap game too political for me. Like, this is, like, all the shit that be in my head is politics that stop us from making it and I, I feel like that's the biggest issue with the independent artist game whether you want to call it the underground or whatever the biggest issue is that the independent artist is at war with the machine which is the mainstream whatever you want to call it we at war with the algorithm and we at war with each other because niggas want to be on before the next nigga nigga don't nigga do not support the next nigga i hate when motherfuckers be like i, I, I want to see everybody when that's bullshit niggas want to see everybody win until you win it more than them swear yeah. to god niggas want to see everybody win until you win it more than them because once you start winning more than them now niggas insecure now niggas like oh he you know what i'm saying like where my spot at you know what i'm saying nigga, your spot is your spot you gonna make it you know what i'm saying i'm one of them people i look at it like bro if my nigga blow up right now, like Slim Gorilla, I've been making music with Slim Gorilla like since like it's 2024. And we made our first song in 2013. That's 11 years. If Slim blow up right now, I'm talking about he on stage with Drake. He on stage with all the, the name brand rappers. I'm like, bro, that's a win for me because we got tracks together. If fans are like me, fans like to backtrack and go through, go back and see. Like, I want them motherfuckers. I find the artists. I want to go back to their roots. I try and go back to their earliest tape. I want to listen mm -hmm. to all that shit. If your partner blow up right now, you got music with them, they going to find your tracks with him. This is my point. I don't understand how motherfuckers cannot see beyond themselves and see that one win for the real independent artists is a win for all of us. Niggas do not see it like that. Niggas got to see themselves winning, bro. And that's like, I'm not trying to just go off on a tangent. That's my biggest issue with the game. These are another one of the reasons like I have a hard time writing bars because like I see myself in a CEO position. Like I don't just think of myself as Dreddy the rapper or Dreddy the producer. I think of myself as Dreddy like I'm managing myself and I don't want to make another song that that flies underneath the fucking radar. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to make another song that's just like, it just don't, it don't, it don't buzz like that. It's not like I care about blowing up, but you know, you, Cash could probably attest to this. You make a song, you resonated with it, with it so much that you want it to be received in a certain way and everybody don't gravitate towards that shit. That shit could discourage you. Like, nigga, I don't want to put out another motherfucking song and y'all niggas sleep on it. Everybody talk about being slept on, but when you truly a slept on motherfucker and you feel like, nigga, my music ain't getting the love like it deserved, that shit could discourage you, bro. Like, I've been doing this shit for years and I still get discouraged because it's like, I don't want to put out a record and y'all niggas overlook my shit. You know what I'm saying? And I know I'm going off on a tangent, but like, that's really my biggest issue with the game is that the independent artist is competing with the next independent artist when we all are competing against the algorithm and the machine. We competing against the labels. We competing against the motherfuckers that got, you know what I'm saying, sound, uh, Spotify playlists, you know what I'm saying, 
fuel to their music to where it's gone below for them. We yeah. don't have that. We don't have access to all these playlists and shit that's going to run our plays up. I, hey, I, this is all I'm going to say, bro. I get off on this shit all the time. It takes a thousand streams on Spotify for an artist to generate five fucking dollars. A thousand streams. Now, I think this is me going back to the independent artists and their resources. Think about being an artist. Like, we've been rapping for years. Think about being the motherfucker that just came out. You don't even got no fans like that. You probably got like 10, 20 people that bump your music that you went to school with. It take a thousand streams on Spotify to make five dollars, bro. This is like one of the things I'll be big on. We got to keep music physical, bro, because the streaming is distorting the value of music. How can they tell me what the value of my music is per stream? You know what I'm saying? Exactly, bro. Keep the music physical. CDs, cassettes, yeah. vinyls, LPs, bro. I'm big on that shit. Why should it take a thousand streams to make five dollars when you could buy my album for like 20 bucks and you just just save me like four thousand streams, basically, bro? This is the shit that I be on, bro. I swear to God, this is the shit that I be on. I think about this shit all the time. Like this is going back to my point that independent artists need a union, bro. Because Let's if we union, uh, about that real quick. I'm in the, um, we could... I got something important to say though. If you, if you like, um, I'm in the, I'm a, I'm a film student. Go ahead, right? bro. I'm a film student, and um, so mm -hmm. despite you know the SAG after blah blah blah, but well, locally, like if you're, let's say you're shooting in Philly, I have an example. I'm gonna draw to the rap industry real quick. Um, famous actors, they were getting ready for, um, they were doing a shoot, and um. Yeah, so the filmmakers got the set ready, right? And then the actors were hella late and the people carved out a certain amount of time and shit and the actors were, you know what I'm saying, didn't show up on time and then it delayed the whole thing and then they had to shoot again another day, right? That, since they're all in a union, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. that shit gets reported and then people are kind of told, like, nah, you can't be working with this person again, or you can't be doing that, or they'll find you, or they'll, they won't, or they'll tell everybody, like, nah, bro, like, just because you're famous, you can't be doing that shit. But then when J. Cole sets up a studio session with NBA Youngboy, and NBA Youngboy doesn't want to show up because he changes his mind, everybody's calling NBA Youngboy like a badass. They're like, ah, NBA Youngboy, ah, yo, he's a man. He don't want to work with that lame J. Cole or some shit like that. And it's like, what the yeah, fuck are yeah. we doing yeah, here? Like, yeah. Let's have some respect for business ethics, right? And that's why the film industry yeah, um, exactly. and a lot of other industries are kind of easier to kind of build up in is because there's like a, a respect exactly. for like uh the business i mean even in more band kind of settings but mainly like other mm -hmm. industries have done that more successfully you know yeah yeah man i just feel like rap doesn't really have like a guideline you know what i'm saying it's really like the wild wild west you just do it how the fuck you want you know what i'm saying niggas get in Anybody where they fit in you know what i'm saying for real bro like like and then the my really biggest thing all the money from me. Exactly, bro. Like I always thought like how can I put this, bro? Like I thought you come out, I really thought it's gonna sound crazy. I thought niggas was supposed to put you on. Like I'm for real, I'm just being honest. I thought like, you know what I'm saying, like like mm -hmm. I could make an example, you know, Cardo fuck with my music. I thought, you know what I'm saying, Cardo fuck with my music, I'm about to be on. Like I thought, like, you know what I'm saying, niggas gonna hear my tracks now, he gonna support my shit. It ain't like that, bro. Niggas is not going to put you on. It's crazy, bro, because it's like you just got to grind and grind and grind and maybe see a crease in the motherfucking door to get through. And it might not even be like how you think. Like, I thought I was going to get through the door with my rapping. I'm not getting through the door with my rapping. It's my producing that got me on the album with Larry June. Like, I always wanted to rap. Like, I wanted to rap on a song with Larry June, but my, my melodies is on a Larry June album. And, you know... I feel like that's almost like, you know, my test to like what the game is. It's like, it's like, it's no guidelines to this shit. It's no like real like way how it, it works. It's really cutthroat. It's cutthroat how the rap game work because you think that everybody will be your supporter. Like I ain't even got to like go back to my point I just made. Everybody not going to be your supporter. A lot of niggas are in imaginary competition with you, which is weird to me because it's like we are all 
of the same entity. If we all independent artists, no matter what your music sound like, you could make a different style. You can make Memphis funk. You can make whatever the fuck you want to make. We all the same entity. We all upload our music to the same algorithm. You upload yeah. your shit to Spotify, Apple Music, yeah. SoundCloud. Yeah. It don't. Yeah. It don't. Exactly, bro. It don't fucking matter. Niggas be trying to break it down to all these fucking like little sets and clicks and shit. You get old enough, bro. You realize, bro, we are okay. all of the same fucking thing, bro. And a win for any one of us would be a win for all of us if you look at it the right way. If the nigga got his heart in the right way, like I'll, I'll tell you right now, bro. Right hand to God on my dead daddy. So I blow up right now, bro. I promise you, I'm going on world tour right now. I'm not going on world tour with these mainstream niggas. I'm bringing the niggas from day one up. I'm bringing hey. Domster with me. I'm bringing Slim hey. with me. I'm bringing the niggas I was in the mud with. I'm not gonna be the motherfucker to blow up and be like, oh yeah, I'm with I'm with Drake now. I'm with I'm with Wayne now. I'm with I'm with all the mainstream six figures, nigga. No, I'm like, bro. If I kick the dough in, I'm bringing all the underground with me. That's how yeah. I look at the game. That's my that's my hope, bro. Call me, like, call me a motherfucker just hoping for a, a wish on the star, or whatever, bro. But I truly believe that that's how it's supposed to work. All it takes is one motherfucker kicking in the dough. You just gotta have your heart in the right place and hope that niggas around you got their heart in the right place. Everybody not cut from that cloth, but the niggas I came up around making music with. I feel like they cut from that cloth, bro. And that's what I hang my hat on. That's what my hope is that. That's what I believe in. Everybody not built like that, but I feel like that's what it takes, bro. That's what I see in the game that's not going on is that the independent artist not truly represented the way it should be represented. And for me, if I got to make it technical, the streaming shit gotta be motherfucking like retuned, bro. There's no reason that it should take a thousand streams to make five dollars. Like if, like, bro, I'll put it like yeah. this: if a stream was worth a, if a stream was worth a dollar, bro, we'd be balling out of control. Cause I could get a thousand streams. You, if a stream worth a, a dollar, nigga, that's a thousand dollars in your motherfucking pocket. I could pay my rent hey, bro, like yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? Like that's one of the things I always look at. Like I'm like. This shit is crazy, bro. Like, did you see? I'm not even just trying to like get everywhere. Did you see um uh, a couple of days ago? Um, Universal Music, they pulled like so many music, they all that all, music from TikTok. They all their music off of TikTok, all, of all their artists, all of it. And you and you what, what is the reason? Because they feel like TikTok, TikTok is like and not you, you fucking money. Exactly, bro. And like nah, this is going back to my point. And this is major labels. This is major labels. We're not talking about independent art. We're talking about major record label niggas. And they you like, y'all like, not. You know, like, low key, Suicide Boys, for instance, they making millions off them people playing their shit on TikTok. Exactly. And it's like, them show. niggas not seeing none of that, bro. Thanks, yeah. And, you know, that's Yo. my point, bro. It's like, I love the internet. I love the internet, but I feel like some of the streaming era has distorted the value of music because we can't get paid like that you would think it would be easy to get paid because you got access to the internet it could be millions of motherfuckers out here maybe billions of motherfuckers that that discover your shit but in reality they dictate the value of your music per stream and that shit don't make sense to me like now we we break it down to how many times the song is played to determine the value it used to be how many units was moved like if the motherfucking album sold three million units nigga you cashing out now it ain't like that it's like it don't make sense. I was watching a Snoop Dogg interview. Snoop Dogg was talking oh, about man. he broke three billion streams. He said, he said, man, cuz that ain't even forty five thousand dollars. Three billion streams, not even forty five thousand dollars, bro. Yeah, I heard that shit. That shit was crazy. Like, I mean, if he sold three point five billion fucking tapes, you know how much he he'd be able to fucking buy Taylor Swift or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, exactly, bro. Like, I'm a huge advocate for keep the music physical bro keep the music physical i'm cool with the streaming like i'm cool with the listener having access to the music but i'm a huge advocate for bro keep the music physical i don't give a fuck if it's a cd a cassette a lp vinyl whatever what have you keep the music physical because that's how you keep the power in the hand of the artist because then the 
artist dictates how much his his art is worth. If I want to sell this album for twenty dollars, nigga, fuck it. If I want to sell this album for twenty five, nigga, that's my prerogative. We mm-hmm. let we let these streaming platforms determine what our music is worth, and that's bullshit to me. I I toy with all these ideas. Like I thought about like. Like making an album and just telling motherfuckers, yo, cash at me, bro. Like, cash at me five, I'll send you the link to the album or some shit. Because it's like somehow, this is just like me spitballing. These are ideas in my head, but I'm like, somehow the the artist has to capitalize, bro. It should not be like this because, like, going back to my point, when the independent artist first comes out, we're not talking about like grinding for years and years and years. I'm talking about when they first come out, first day out the gate. It should not be like, oh, uh, you ain't got no clout. You can't make no money. Like, this is business to me. An artist makes a service. An artist is a service. He provides a service. The music is a service. It's That's what's crazy to me is music. Is- exactly. It's one of the only forms of business where it's distorted because it's like, y'all trying to tell me what my art worth. It don't work like that. If I had a T-shirt, I tell y'all what to pay for the shirt. With the music, it's like, no, it's worth this many plays per stream, blah, blah, blah. No, that's bullshit, bro. That's bullshit. And I think that's the biggest setback for the independent artists in the new age. Hell, the labels on that bullshit, too. They having a hard time. They won't, like, say it out loud, but even record labels, the majors are having a hard time, you know what I'm saying, regulating the value of their music because it's like we all caught up in the streaming shit and motherfuckers ain't really like buying CDs like that. Now, if we get into like art, like we have a, a certain, we have a certain like niche like crowd that like they'll buy a cassette, they'll buy a CD and I'm thankful for that by being an underground motherfucker because these motherfuckers are buy. I get messages from motherfuckers like, bro, when you, when you gonna print your album on cassette, when you gonna print your album on vinyl, I'm like, bro, I'm gonna do it because like, that's like the last hope, bro. I remember that's one of the last thing Prince was preaching before he passed away. It was keep the music physical, bro. And I'm preaching that to the day I die. If there's nothing else y'all remember from me, bro, I promise you, keep the music physical. We gotta keep the music physical. We gotta keep printed on CD cassette. I don't give a fuck, motherfucker. I don't got no CD drive in my car, nigga. You better go get one. You better go get something. It, like, to, for me, bro, I, I look at it like, so many motherfuckers won't even have a CD player. They just want it for the memorabilia. They just want it to, when motherfuckers come over so they can show it to them. Like, look at my vinyl collection. Look, yep. I got I got, I got, got cash on vinyl. I got Dreddy Franks on vinyl. Like, these motherfuckers will buy your shit in physical just to, like, put it up so they can show it off. You know what I'm saying? And that's what, that's what matters, bro. That's what matters. That's that, what yo. I feel like. Exactly. That's, I feel like what matters that, you know the digital realm where where we're going further away from that we we got to keep that involved bro we got to keep the shit physical because the listener deserves the memorabilia you know what i'm saying and you know i could talk for hours about this shit finals right now and show you for sure for sure go ahead but you know like that's like one of my biggest like issues bro like beyond anything i don't give a fuck about me like i'm just a vessel bro i'm just here until I'm gone, but it like you know this shit gonna proceed beyond us, bro. And I don't want like the next generation of artists to be fucked in the game, trying to figure out how how they make their footprint in the game and also see profit. Cause that was always my biggest issue with like going out performing or doing this and that. I'm like, bro, I want to see some money from this shit. I, motherfuckers be, I hate when motherfuckers be like, you know, do it for the love, do it for love. Nah, nigga, do it for the profit, bro. Do it for I the profit because. Me. This exactly. This is oh, you got my nigga Dom on vinyl, bro. Let me hold on, hold on, hold on. I got a screenshot. This motherfucker, my nigga Dom. You got my nigga Dom on vinyl, bro. That's real, bro, bro. That's real, bro. You and it's, it? Like that's my point. Yeah, I screenshot it, okay. bro. And that's my point, bro. SGP. Like, oh my god, bro. I love SGP. He one of my favorite people. He one of the first people that like really inspired me to rap on my own beat, bro. I love Action. Space Ghost Perp. Oh God. Mayhem. Ooh. 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 And, um, let's go a little classic, okay? Old Beatles, come on. Uh, <laughs> all right. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, who, who doesn't love a little bit of a little bit of Yami? Hell yeah. A little bit of Doom. Hell show. yeah. Hell yeah. Them my folks. Shout out to That's Doom. That's why. Show, I, 
fire shit right there, bro. Yeah. Uh, what I do too with fucking DJ Killer C, I DM him. I'm like, yo, you got that shit on fucking CD? And he's like, yeah, let me send you the Kunaki link. And you know what I'm saying? You can buy that shit. Like sometimes he don't even be posting that shit. I just, he just sells it to me through the DM. You know what I'm saying? Cause he just, he'll forget to post yeah, it. And I'm just yeah. like, fuck it. Like I got like fucking 20 bucks. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'll hit up Killer C. He'll, I'll pay, cash app him 20 bucks. He's, you know what I'm saying? I get my CD in a couple weeks. Like, it is, like, I fuck with that shit. Like, physical media, like, I always hit up artists. I'm like, yo, like, you gotta do more of that shit, too. Like, it's just like, this community, it's so much fun to just, like, always see people. That's that's why I do like this community. Like, it's more so, like, a, um a overall type of thing, right? Like, this community is, is fun. It is fun, but there, I can't say the same for a lot of other different types of uh, genres uh, in and on the come up right now, and it's it's sad to see. But at, at the end of the day, I am proud of do these podcasts with you, with with Cash, with all the people around us, because it is a tight knit community, and I'll forever um, be thankful for that. And um, thank you, Dreddy, for being on the show. Do you have any um more announcements, Cash? If you have any more questions or announcements, uh, speak them now. But thank you, Dreddy, for coming on the show. Really. Man, thank y'all, bro. Man, um, I got my album Rhythm and Playerism coming soon. I'm about to get to work on that motherfucker. Y'all could expect that song. I got some work with uh, it's up in the air. It's whatever the wizard. I call him the wizard. My man Cardo got wings. He uh started a a production team. It's called House of Mob, and I'm on there. We pretty much do the beats for uh Larry June and uh Payro Giovanni. I oh, think nice. they about to start working. On, yeah, I think they about to start working on a uh, big boss in volume three with a uh, payroll. And I'll probably have some production on there. And um, I got some shit with Dom still coming soon. I really wanted to do like a compilation album. Like I'm just saying this right now it's out of my head, but I wanted to do an album of like all my homies just rapping on my beats. And I, I don't got to be like the front man. I wanted to just be behind the scenes as the, the director doing the beats. That's something I want to do. And that's really it, man. That's really all I'm working on right now. I just want to say I appreciate y'all having me on here, allowing me to speak my mind, bro, because, like, it's all this shit been up in my head. I've been wanting to get this out, and I just appreciate y'all giving me, you know, a, a backdrop to just to vent. Because to me, I feel like I've been venting more than doing anything, just letting, letting it all out, bro. And I appreciate y'all having me on here. I'll come back again whenever y'all want to have me back, bro. I swear. Cash will be here too. I, I, I'll make sure of that. All right. Yeah, if yeah. I didn't like what you were saying, I would have stopped that shit early. But um, and thank you, Cash, for coming on. For real, thank you. I might fuck around. Want to fuck on this shit myself? I like this shit. Yeah, <laughs> you. you need to DM right, me, bro. Shit, I'll, I'll let you know how I do this shit for real. And uh, shit, yeah, uh, real, shit coming. I got this fucking tape. I got the Raw's War tape with my homie coming, and then I'm gonna do Underground Tom Underground too. I think that I don't know when that shit dropping, but it's gonna come out this year or some shit. I want to do, I want to get some physical so bad. I've never had like tapes or none of that shit, so I'm, I'm gonna get into trying to get into that shit. And I'm about to start a fucking clothing, a little clothing line, a little merch brand. Nice. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. What's that shit called? I remember when Underground to Underground, Underground to Underground, it was like a fucking seed, you know what I'm saying? I remember that you first brought that shit up on the show. For real. I always wanted to make a... You influenced that shit. You influenced two of my tapes, my nigga. I'm going to let you know that. <laughs> and some funk for your trunk. I got that from funk for... I got I literally that. No, no bullshit. Thank you. I wanted to make that, bro. ride too, man. That's yeah, uh, yeah, bro. We're gonna, we're gonna, hey, gonna, gonna, gonna lock in on this shit, bro. What'd you say? Hell yeah, bro. I was, I was telling Cass, we're gonna lock in on some shit, bro. I'm down to do some records with you, bro, for sure. We're locking in soon on everything I love, like in the, in this. It's gonna be in this month on, on everything I love. Watch. Yeah. Oh, God, bro. Let me know, bro. I'm around all the time, bro. Just bang my line. Yeah, yeah, I will. And um, and obviously, links in the description to what you got going on and um links to cash music but um dreddy this will be a historic moment for fucking underground i know a lot of people that are going to see this shit and be like what the fuck you got fred <laughs> you got, got dreddy franks on this bitch 
Um, thank you again. Yeah. Um, stick around after I do my little outro real quick, and we'll just chop it up. But everybody, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, and subscribe to Pollute Your Soul. Fucks with your boys, and peace out.